And now, please welcome Colin McLaurin. So, hi guys, thanks for having me. Uh, it's just going to be a short one today, but I'm actually looking at some part of God's creation, part of astronomy actually, a, a galaxy. And uh, I've got a video I'd like to show you today. It's um, pretty amazing. It was actually released by NASA just last month in January. And what it is, it's a close-up picture of a galaxy. That's all it is. Galaxy, of course, being a big cluster of stars. So is that video nearly up? Um, yeah, and it's uh, the most detailed picture that's ever been taken of the Andromeda galaxy. And if you're curious where that is in the sky right now, I just checked before on my little iPhone app. It's roughly up here right now if you're based in Brisbane. So if you're on the opposite side of the world, I suggest looking maybe straight down and, yeah, you wouldn't be able to see through the Earth. But, yeah, it's, uh, it's up there depending on where your location is. So um, what it is, it's, um, it's the most detailed picture that's ever been taken of one of the closest galaxies to our own galaxy. So as you may know, we live in a galaxy called the Milky Way, which has about 300 billion stars, each sort of like our sun in it. It's amazing. We um, can't really see our galaxy from the outside because we're in it. We have to sort of reconstruct what it might look like. But uh, the Andromeda galaxy here is... It's uh, the closest really large galaxy to our own. And as it says on the screen there, it was a 70,000 pixel by 22,000 pixel image taken by the Hubble telescope. It was over 600 photos through various different lenses, all pieced together. And I want to say thanks to Dave, who's just a random YouTube author, who put this video together. And it's just a zoom in on this giant, giant photo. The photo itself is actually four gigabytes in, in data, so it's um, incredibly large. And we're just zooming in, zooming in on the Andromeda galaxy. And this talk today, it's not so much about giving, you know, hardcore or apologetics evidence for God being real or something like that. It's more aiming for the wow factor, like, wow, look at God's creation. That's just amazing. That's beautiful. You can see in the picture, there's just so many individual stars and as you know, we're, we're zoomed in very closely now. So this is like a, a vast island of stars. There's actually about one trillion stars in the Andromeda galaxy. And for people from some cultures who use the numbers differently, that's a million, million stars. You can see some of the brighter ones. Uh, I suspect that's actually stars in our own galaxy. So they're much, much closer to us. So they're much bigger and brighter. There's a yellow one, blue one. There's different colors in there. You can see ones look more red, ones look more blue. That actually lines up with the age of the star to a large extent. So the younger stars are more blue, the older stars are more red. You can see it's getting um, a lot brighter here and the stars are denser. That's because we're zooming more towards the center of the galaxy where there's a lot more stars, a lot more light. It's also a bit brown because of the dust. Um, astronomers use the words like dust and metal in extremely generic ways, where dust is basically anything that's not, you know, a star and a few other basic things. So pretty much anything really. You can see the, um, it's so bright because we're near the center. You can see those brown spots on it. That's dust clouds, which are absorbing some of the light. So it's not as bright where those areas are. So you can see it's incredibly bright here because we're near the middle of the galaxy. And all this, this whole video has just been from a single giant photo that somebody has zoomed in and panned around on the camera. And as you zoom out, you can get a real feel for the scale of it. So that's only part of the Andromeda galaxy. You can see that's the full Andromeda galaxy there. This is more how it would look like in the night sky as we look up. So it's, um, it's small, but you can actually see it with the naked eye. Most of us live in cities these days, you probably won't see it. But if you live in a nice country area and you know where to look, you can just get a smartphone app or something, it'll, it'll tell you. As I said, right now it's about directly overhead Brisbane, so you can if you're very smart, smarter than most of us here, you can calculate where that is for your local city. But uh, 
I just find that incredible, you know, just, um, just the beauty of God's creation. We haven't seen such a detailed look at that other galaxy before. But, you know, some people see this Andromeda galaxy as a bit of a threat because the scientists have worked out that it's actually heading towards our own Milky Way galaxy at about 110 kilometres per second coming towards us. So that tiny little blip you saw up on the sky there, if you were alive for a few billion years, you would see that coming closer and closer and closer. A trillion stars heading your way, you know, it's a bit dangerous, right? They didn't realize until a few years ago, they actually didn't know whether this was gonna hit us or not. Um, it was clearly moving towards us, but the question was, is it moving sideways at all as well? Is it gonna like skim past us or is it actually gonna hit us? And just in the last few years, astronomers now believe they have the evidence that it will crash into our own galaxy. So in four billion years time, that might be the end. And some people find a need to escape that. There's another reason you don't have to worry about that because just before that, our sun's gonna get a lot bigger, they believe, and expand, burn up all the water on earth. No, no life will be able to exist here. So I'm not really worried about Andromeda in four billion years because in just under that, I'm worried about the sun getting bigger. But you know what? I'm actually not worried about either of those because you know, I think there's going to be a different end to the world, which will be ultimately a lot better. So I don't, I don't put my ultimate trust personally in the ability of science. Even though I am a scientist to be, I'm studying this sort of stuff um, for my master's degree in physics. Even though I love it, I can't say I put my trust in science as would say the people in Interstellar, the movie, where the great goal is to leave Earth and get into space because, oh, that's the answer. You know, I don't see living in a little cramped space shuttle with people you probably get sick of and have arguments with in like two minutes as the answer. I, I think the Earth's pretty good, but on faith, we believe that God's going to recreate the Earth. He's going to fix it up. So, yeah, and I, I think that'll be a lot sooner than four billion years. But in the meantime, let's just enjoy the creation God's had. To help you understand God's Word in a whole new way, go to goodnewsunlimited.com. You can sign up there to get your free devotional delivered to you each day. been paid for by the partners and friends of Good News Unlimited. Word spreads fast.